Oh yeah, that's good. Oops. Oh no, how do I go? There. Okay. Ah! ah! So quiet in the night. I haven't set my layers up either. Do 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 do. Do 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 do. All right. Hello, hello, hello. It's time for volume four. We're doing this Beijing baby number this week. So um, any of your questions for Beijing baby is welcomed. Um, but I forgot to prep the skin. So let's go and do the skin while everyone is coming in. Skin, skin, cool, got to fill the white in the, <laughs> I was refreshing your Insta page waiting for the live. I'm so sorry, I'm a little bit late. Um, I got stuck on a phone call, uh, but we're here, we're here. Um, How's everyone going um, with everything? How's isolation going? Health-wise, I'm feeling way better. Thank you for asking. Um, I had a call with the doctor and the nurses today. They still want to keep me um, in isolation, unfortunately, because I'm still showing some symptoms. But otherwise, I would say that I'm getting close to the end. Like, I haven't coughed today, so that's the good news. Um, yeah. All right, so just doing quickly some of the skin. Sorry, I should have done this before because it's the boring part because – you know, in five minutes, you guys are going to harass me about putting green somewhere. I know it. I know it. It's been happening every single week. I don't know why it's become the green thing. Um, but anyway, here we go. Um, so this one's Beijing Baby. And if you guys have um, downloaded it yet, I literally just had put it up. Um I was thinking of keeping it pretty traditional. So the red in the borders, oh, I really like that. Um, <laughs> the green, the green has started. Um, yeah, I was thinking of keeping it pretty traditional for this one and pretty simple. But I'm willing to take some suggestions. Do we think red for the... For the characters around it as well. Don't know. Let's see. Oh, what did I do? What did I do? Oh, here. Yeah. Hmm, is that too much? Is that good? Not sure. Make the face Shrek. <laughs> Um, so Beijing Baby was my second single um, for Jaguar Jones. Oh, is that too much? Do we think that's too strong? Maybe that's strong is what we need. Maybe try the green instead of the red. Here we go. It started. The green things have started. Why couldn't you pick a more simple color to work with to harass me with every week? <laughs> green is actually my favorite color. <laughs> You wouldn't be able to tell, though. How's that? That's kind of cool. No? Yellow characters or orange? Orange could be cool. Should I do the background, like, throwback to Beijing Baby? Um, how do you feel after the EP has been released? It's actually so um, 
liberating. Um, it feels really good to be like, um, you know, to have to work towards something for like two years and wondering if you could ever put together a body of work out there. Um, and then for people to finally have that piece that you've worked on for so long, I don't know, it feels really good. I think I was kind of really emotional on Friday uh, because, I mean, I was in the fucking hospital, but also, um, you know, it, it made me realize like what I had been through to get to this point of releasing it, including being in the fucking hospital with COVID-19. And maybe it seems like weird, but I literally lined up all my music videos and the songs that were released and just sat there with a glass of plum wine and watched through all of it, just being like, holy shit, we fucking made that, you know? And I think it just like hit me all of a sudden because the whole two years has just been like, go, 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 go. You kind of detach yourself sometimes to be able to get to that place of um, uh, being able to meet a deadline or get everything put together. Um, so it was just like on Friday night, it all hit me and I just felt proud of myself. So I'm going to say I was proud of myself and I'm so glad that I got over um, my insecurities of being an artist and just put myself out there and for it to resonate with people um, the way that it has is like the pure joy I have as being an artist. So um, they, they let you have plum wine in the hospital. <laughs> it was like this much with this much soda water, maybe like this. <laughs> so it was probably more uh, soda water than plum wine. Um, yeah. Cool. Any other questions? There's no fun in making things easy. I'm vibing a blue background and orange characters. Let's try this blue background. Maybe the red text is full on. Not sure. Anyway, I'll do the background. Let's try this. Mm, I'm just going to move it over a little bit to the teal section. Do, 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 do. All right. Mm, just go a little bit brighter. How's that? Maybe paler, more pale. Oh, cool. That's kind of cool. Do I like it? Yeah, okay, I should change the characters. I'm going to change the character colours and I'm going to cheat a little bit here and just see what looks good. <laughs> Green. Oh, blues. Can you guys see that? Oh, I posted mine on my page. I also have a light blue background but with yellow characters and a little bit of blue in the writing. Cool. I'll have to chuck your name in before we do the merch draw today. Da 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 da. Um, I kind of like blue. Oh, blue like that is cool. Or should I do like that? Saturation up. Blue. Maybe like that. Yeah, vibes. All right, and then skin. I really want to make this one into a t-shirt actually and just have like repetitively um, on the sleeves like this actually. That'd be sick. Da -da 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 -da. I just want to make t-shirts that I would wear. Okay, and then skin. Fill those ears up. What color hair are we feeling? Like your standard, traditional, I have normal hair color or something wild and crazy. I wish I didn't say that because I know what the answer is going to be. Um, what time are you doing the merch draw? I literally have it right here and it's ready to go whenever. So as soon as we just kind of base color in this, we can go straight to it. Um, yeah. 
What color text? Lime green, green. Ah! Ah! Green, so many greens. Oh, we think the hair should be green. Ah! What about like a navy? Eh? <laughs> How's the Navy? Can you guys see that all right? Um, what about purple hair like your jumper? Jaguar green text. Holy shit, I just watched your Triple J Nirvana cover. It's so fucking awesome. That came from YouTube. Thanks, guys. That was a fun time. Um, I was so nervous for that one, actually. It was the first time I'd done anything live and, like, nationally as well. No poop green really messing with you now. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of looking cool. Are we liking that? do 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 Um, was that yellow hair? Did anyone have questions? They can throw it in as well. It can be anything about the EP um, or the song itself, Beijing Baby. Um, hair is too dark, said someone. Too dark? Maybe, actually. Perhaps. I feel like maybe the background is wrong. Anyway, um, if you guys haven't downloaded yours, you can do that. Um, it's the link in my bio. Um, so I guess I'll talk about Beijing Baby a little bit. But Beijing Baby was um, a really difficult song for me. And um, that was because I had spent... I wrote it in January last year and I had spent months of my entire soul just recording this track and um, I uh, had it permanently deleted and like I don't really want to get into why but you know I don't really know the why because it had nothing to do with me but it was just permanently deleted and I was absolutely devastated. My soul was so crushed and I felt so much pressure and stress because I had told them that I was going to be delivering it in three days and here I was stuck with absolutely nothing um, and uh, a music video shoot planned for on that weekend. Um, so I felt really defeated and I felt like I was going to have to go and say um, I can't um, – I can't deliver. I can't um, put out a new single release. We're going to have to derail the plans. But in the end, I suddenly found, I guess, the mojo and the gung-ho to just pick myself up and charge through it. So luckily I have this amazing band and we just, like, went into it. Um, Aiden, who's my bassist, who you might have met on the last live stream, he also, uh, we co-produced the song together. We just spent all day, every day for the next 10 days, just smashing through Beijing Baby. And it was so hard to get perspective because normally you, you know, um, um, take space from a song um, so that you can like refresh, you know, like when you go to the department store and you spray perfume way too much and then like, you sniff the coffee beans and then it's like, ha, ah, like I can smell again. Well, we couldn't have that with our ears because the only thing you can do that for your ears is time. Um, but we didn't have time and we just smashed through it and I swear we were going like crazy. And I ended up filming the music video without the song at all and didn't tell anyone that I didn't have the song so that it didn't give anxiety to, to people um, and it just made them focus on and on the one thing 
um, they needed to be doing. But it all ended up uh, coming together last minute all right and you would have never noticed, um, I guess, or know of the story. But that's how Beijing Baby came together. Um, yeah, and then I won a Queensland Music Award for it in March this year and that was the best feeling ever because that song really pushed me to my limits. It ended up sounding, sorry to answer the question on YouTube, it did end up sounding different than the Lost version or, yeah, I actually think you're right in that question. It almost felt like um, we had rehearsed so much with the last recording that it made us that much slicker for putting it together for the new recording. And I'm really glad in some respects that um, I re-recorded the vocals because I just got to a way better place with my vocals um, in the second run. Hello. I'm saying hello to the people on YouTube. Hello, hello, hello. Um, yeah. All right, there was a question up here. When you create a song, how do you know when it's finished or are there always going to be changes you would make? Um, sometimes I think you have to just call it at a certain point as well because you could just keep uh, like pick, nitpicking at something and never putting it out there. And I think a lot of creatives do battle with that as well. And so I think it's a delicate balance of like, yes, you will always, always, always be changing um, your creativity and your output like you could change that forever and ever but then no one will ever see it so I think at some point you just kind of call it and when I like to call it I don't know it depends like when I write a song sometimes I just write a song until that energy of um, uh, like creativity kind of fizzles away and I just go like okay it's time to not push too far because you're just going to lose that magic and um I kind of work on that basis, but I always run on um, the idea of giving each song its merit. So even if you're writing something and it sounds like absolute garbage and you're like, I will never use this piece of work, it sounds like bubble gum garbage, I always make the point of finishing a song because you just never know and it's. I feel like it's, it's that training of completing something that might – train you up for the next song to be even that much slicker. Um, next song name, Mojo and Gun Ho. <laughs> That's so funny. Um, yeah, the flute on the EP uh, came about because uh, I had written the song ages ago and I found an old demo of that song um, on the weekend and just laughed at where it was uh, when it first existed. But I wrote this line, I guess, um, on that song, like, do, 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 do. Uh, and I wrote it with a MIDI flute sound. And I was like, you know what? It will be so much cooler if I just learned to play the flute on the track. And I didn't know anyone who played flute, so I just learned that line and played that line and just practiced it for live. Um, and so to be honest, I'm not a flute player at all or anything. It's literally that one song. And now with Rising Sun live, I play flute in it when I feel like it. So there's two songs. So that's the limit to my flute. Um, uh, what do you call it? Catalog. How much do you think this strange world period is going to affect your music or art in general? I mean, I think this strange world period is definitely going to affect us for a really long time. I think it's going to affect, I mean, we as an industry with music and art, it's all about people. And in this pandemic, the gathering of people is what is affected. And so we're so um, lenient on government restrictions and lockdowns and our capability of being able to gather um, to run this industry that I think this pandemic is definitely going to crush us for a little bit. And so we can see that we've uh, tried to survive in creative ways by, you know, there's busking online or I've started a Patreon last week and I had never considered like to actually going ahead with the Patreon, but I have because 
I don't want this pandemic to crush me. I, I want to come out of it ready to rock and roll. And um, so I think we all have had to be creative in different ways. Um, I think also consumer confidence is just going to be gone for a little while and it's going to take a little bit of time to rebuild. And uh, so, um, you know, people are going to have fear and anxiety about gathering in groups. People are going to be scared of letting go of their money so like easily because they don't know when it's going to be coming um, next. So I think we're going to be affected for a little while because we're considered a little bit like non-essential. Music and art isn't toilet paper and hand sanitizer, is it? So it's considered non-essential. But I really want to put forward the fact that I think it is an essential part of humanity because it captures the truth and the emotions and the moments of history. And, um, you know, science will take down the statistics and facts of things, but music and art will be capturing... Um, what makes us human and that's really important and shouldn't get lost so that's my big speech <laughs> um on that one little question um i'm just reading through do, 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 do. maybe some of these yeah um to relearn my calf puppy i fully agree like i had to get over the hurt of losing beijing baby but i think it really like was a boot camp of making me a better performer um grew my skin to be thicker as well and to just be more resilient and ready for the 2019 that i got in the end um yeah I really need to upgrade my primary school level flute when I can afford it. Like I've taken my flute to these like flute peoples. I've taken my flute to the flute doctor and the flute doctor says, this is for young babies and it's um, not really fixable and I should probably upgrade to a better flute. And then I looked up like a uh, better flute and man, they're expensive. So I need to hold on tight and wait for it for some money but I really wanted 2020 to be my goal of better getting better at the flute yeah yeah and that's my other point too thank you Angelique um is that it's really important in these times for us to feel connected um and together even in our isolated moments and it's in these times when we have to stay at home uh is when we're looking for entertainment and where does the entertainment come from it's the music and arts industry so yeah. When will we hear Taipei, baby? <laughs> um, I, You are always looking at Taipei, baby, right here. <laughs> I am the Taipei, baby. Um, <laughs> um, does live performance interest you more than recording? Uh, yes, actually. Live performance is what made me fall in love with music. I didn't really grow up doing music and thinking I wanted to be a musician. But live performance, the first time I performed live, that rawness and connectedness and that intimacy and um, the ability to express is what made me fall in love with music so much uh, that I needed to, like, keep it in my everyday life. <laughs> What's on your socks? This is polka dots of many crazy colors and my shoes. I do love these shoes a lot. They're so cool. So I know you asked about my socks, but now you're getting the underside of my shoes. But I love this red circle. It's just a nice little touch. Anyway, uh, one of my favorite other favorite artists is benefiting from a Patreon in this period too. It's a great help. Yeah, it definitely, I didn't expect people to sign up to my Patreon like they have. And literally within like a week or so, we've got 41 pledges. And not only that, I've been the most fucking isolated in this five weeks. Like I have never been so isolated in my life. And my Patreon community has been so awesome. Like they have made me feel warm and that there's support and that there's family, not just because they're pledging, but because we have this little chat room um, on that we talk every day on. And that's been really fun. Um, 
Who is the coolest of all the other Australian Eurovision contestants 2020? Ah, I love all my children. Um, I don't know. Like, obviously, I got to spend a lot of time with Montaigne and Dadiri being the alternative kids. So um, I really love them. Um, the red <laughs> circle on your shoe matches. Uh, and my, yeah, do, 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 do. Um, why did you want to write Beijing baby? Ah, that was a question from Instagram. Beijing baby is a comment on materialism and privileges and sometimes letting that blind you um, and distract from things. And um, I was just, I guess, making a comment on not being so bogged down by the unimportant stuff. That was why I wrote Beijing Baby at the time. Okay, next question. Dream places to perform, another one from Instagram. Um, so I, like, I was born in Japan, in Tokyo, uh, Yokohama, sorry, and um, and then I moved to Brisbane, Australia. And Brisbane has this amazing venue called the Tivoli. And it might, might not seem like much, but I actually would love to perform at the Tivoli. It's this beautiful old building um, so obviously I would like to go there, but then I would love to play in Tokyo. Um, but also, uh, what's that in London, like Albert Hall or whatever, is that what it's called? Anyway, um, my dream places to perform would be Europe. Uh, I would love to be able to just keep going around in Europe because it's just such a magical place. Um, and the fact that like each place is so different in such close proximity <clears throat> is my favorite and all the food. So dream places to perform is Europe for sure. And another one, are you doing any writing whilst in quarantine? I've been doing so much writing. Like I actually think. We're ready to work on EP number two already. So fingers crossed, that's where we're headed. I'm starting to think of ideas of what I want to do. So isolation has been the perfect time for it. Um, yeah, I'm excited. Okay. Churning through more questions. Oh, have you played any Animal Crossing while in isolation? Uh, I had never heard of Animal Crossing <laughs> until the little chat room on my Patreon where the guys were talking about Animal Crossing and I was like, what you guys talking about? And um, they explained to me that it's some game. So no, I haven't. I don't, I'm, I live under a rock, obviously. Oh. Another Q&A, my big thumb. Aw, not a question, but just wanted to say hi, love your music. Thank you so much, Veronica. Okay, and then different question. What's the story behind You Got Left Behind? I've always wondered. <sighs> Okie dokie. Bye, Angelique. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> Have a nice day. Um, <laughs> you Got Left Behind is about, I guess when you're stuck in that Peter Pan syndrome and you don't want to grow up um, and you – you know, about a person who doesn't want to grow up and struggles with Peter Pan syndrome and um, you put all your energy into this person to make sure that they don't get left behind but at some point you kind of uh, just have to call it because otherwise they kind of drag you down 
with them. Um, so it's a bit of a heavy song offset with an ironic drum beat, but I guess um, I was just reflecting on friendships that I had invested so much of my energy and time on uh, when they weren't willing to grow up or change or do something for themselves. And so a song kind of came out of that. Um, do you like Ariana Grande and Selena Gomez? I like Ariana Grande. I haven't listened to a lot of Selena Gomez, but I have. I do like them both. Um, do you like any other Japanese artists? Do you mean like visual artists or like uh, musician artists? I was so excited to go on tour in the US with Haru Nimuri. I don't know if you guys have heard of her. But, like, when the tour offer came through for us in the U.S. to support her on her tour, I was so excited. Like, we were so stoked. We were going to play. Um, oh, I think I've got to sneeze. <coughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> um, I was so excited to play. Uh, with her because she's such an awesome musician and I had never heard of her and then I looked her up and I was like oh my god this is so cool so I do love her as an alternative indie Japanese artist and then visually uh, I love um, Hokusai and then the last few days I've been um, binging on Studio Ghibli movies so Hayao Miyazaki is just amazing um yeah and there was another oh what's his name Shirakago I think he just does these amazing um, um illustrations as well <laughs> what is the meaning behind the last dance on kill me with your love video um, so if we know Kill Me With Your Love, it's like new, 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 new. And the man and the lady, talk about me as a lady in third person. Um, we, every chorus, we're doing the same dance, like we're in a relationship together. So that was the symbolism. It's like we're dancing together in unison um, and we're still, you know, just like, wanting to play the moves together. In the last chorus, you'll see that his name is Nash. Nash decides to just give up and um, throw it all down and just walk away and leave. And um, when he does that, he cuts and that relationship crumbles. And so I guess uh, why you see me slowly being like, what? Like you, you, you don't want to dance with me and the slow decline of me being like is the symbolism of all of that. Um, but also it was to symbolise the toxic relationship I was singing about in Kill Me With Your Love and how it can sometimes be like orchestrated by, you know, this one person who dictates everything and as soon as he's out you just crumble because you didn't realize how much you were dependent on that person too anyway heavy all right all my songs are pretty heavy i'm sorry oh rena sawayama she's so cool but she's more british right like she's a japanese person um but she grew up in the uk um she's awesome i only just discovered her from like Eurovision fans who are tweeting and just put on the tweets like Jaguar Jones and Rena, Rena Sawayama putting out um, albums on the same day. So I was like, oh, who's this? And just dived into her music and I would say is one of my favourite artists I'm listening to at the moment. Uh, duh. Uh, that was like a Disney sneeze. <laughs> uh, to the person on YouTube, I said, Haru. Nemuri, so it's H A R U space N E M U R I. Yeah, all right, more questions here. Favorite pop punk bands? Oh, I don't even know what is a pop punk band. Like, who is considered to be pop punk? Oh, is Fallout Boy pop, pop punk? Man, I kind of considered Haru Namuri to be pop punk. 
don't you think? I don't know. Does anyone know who she is? I kind of think she's pop punk. Oh, I'm just going to pretend this question never happened. <laughs> uh, um, how tall are you? <laughs> I'm this tall. <laughs> Look, guys, I'm this tall. <laughs> um, oh, no doubt, some 41. Oh, no doubt. That's a favorite. <laughs> Uh, I'm actually 170 centimetres tall. Sometimes I look like I'm puny on stage because my guitarist is 100 and well, he's two metres tall. So um, there was once upon a time where all of my band members were like basically two metres tall. So it was like this and like me on stage like this. like, uh, And then when I jump off stage, like I suddenly change into like this and people are like, oh, you're not a puny tiny Asian at all. And I'm like, it's completely an illusion with my basketball player band. So there you go. That's how tall I am. Um, have, I <laughs> have I mentioned that you have fantastic cheekbones? You can thank my Taiwanese mum for that. Uh, she's got the same cheekbones as well. And um, uh, when... Uh, we used to call them moon cakes. I don't know if you guys know moon cakes, but it's like this Chinese delicacy of like a treat that you uh, eat during like the moon lunar festival thing. Like, uh, yeah, I don't know. Very good explanation, Dina. But basically it's just like these circle patties. And so we call them moon cakes. So there's my moon cake cheeks. Um, basketball player band. I feel like this should be a name of a group. Favorite musical acts. By the way, your EP was fire. Thank you. Thanks for listening to it. Thanks for streaming it. Thanks for sharing it. Thanks for adding it to your playlist. Thanks for buying it. Like we've had a phenomenal result and I, I, I was almost devastated. Like I was sitting at home in isolation, like few hours to go being like, yes, like EP coming out. Like I'm so excited. And um, then the virtual hospital calls me and was like, hey, we're not happy with your symptoms. You have to stay on the phone with me until the ambulance arrives because we're going to take you to the hospital. And I was like, what? What? But, but my EP's coming out. <laughs> um, and so I just thought I'd like fully fudged it uh, because I wouldn't be able to like promote it, you know, and – I just wanted to say this was a long-winded way of saying it, but I just wanted to say thank you to you guys because you guys took care of that for me and it's been a wonderful rollout and I'm really, really, really grateful to everyone who's listened and bought it and shared it and streamed it and added it to their playlists because um, it was all because of you guys. So thank you. Uh, favourite musical acts, by the way. <laughs> uh, I really just digressed there. Um Angel Olsen, Jeff Buckley, uh, Last Shadow Puppets, War Paint, um, Johnny Cash, Porter's Head. Yeah, that's enough, right? The National, Nick Cave. There we go. Boom, ba -da, boom, boom, boom. What was the biggest spider you ever squashed? <laughs> Do you want to know a story of today? Uh, we had this massive wasp. I can't show you because I'm using the phone. But we had this massive wasp like this big with the stinger like this size. And I was washing the dishes and I like had just um, woken up and showered and wasn't wearing pants anyway. And it was attacking my legs and I was like, no. And we uh, sprayed a whole bottle of bug spray because it was just flying so high up in the air. Um and when it fell to the ground, it was so big and the stinger was so visible. I was so scared. Anyway, I survived. Uh, it wasn't a catch and release because uh, I had nothing to do with it. I was just washing the dishes. So I'm just going to blame it on the other person. Um. <laughs> uh, favorite Australian acts? <clears throat> I love Lime Cordial. I'm going to shout out to those boys. Um, they're so friendly and they're my favourite 
most favorite, genuine, authentic, lovely people ever. And I really enjoyed going on tour with them. Uh, I love listening to Jack River and to Derry and Montaigne, obviously. <clears throat> um, uh, who else? Who else? Who else? Uh, they're not really Australian, are they? They're kind of like New Zealand, but old school favorites like Crowded House. Uh, I love Cold Chisel as well. <laughs> I wish Jimmy Barnes was my dad. Um, anyway, ooh, that's on air now. And um, uh, Nick Cave, will you come to? Will you come to the US again after the bless you pandemic has passed? Uh, at the moment, we actually have scheduled tour dates with Haru Namori um, for September. But to be honest, I really don't think that everything will be happening back up again in September. I think that's like a bit um, optimistic. You know, we've got a whole airline shutting down in Australia at the moment, so it's going to be pretty difficult to get over um, outside of Australia. So... My plan is to come back to the US, but I don't know when. At the moment, it's penciled in for September, and we'll just have to see. Next question. Coming to New York, please say yes. Um, man, I want to come back to New York again, like a proper time. Um, yeah, the last time I came to New York, which was my first time, was like eight years ago and it was Christmas, New Year's. And like, I don't know if you've been to New York during Christmas, New Year's, but it's like a mosh pit and you shuffle through the city so slowly and you can't really see anything and it's claustrophobic and it's exhausting. And then the next time I come to New York, it's when COVID-19 hits. And so it's like the complete opposite no vibe, so much fear, so much anxiety, so dead, so quiet. So I have these two stark, stark contrasts of New York and I feel like I really want to come back and spend time in New York um, when I can appreciate the city for what it is in its kind of somewhat normal sense. Um. And next question i do love julia jacqueline too answering relearn on youtube looking through how are you feeling hope you're feeling better if you just tuned in yes i'm feeling better i'm still in isolation i still have covid and it's like my fifth week of it now um but i'm i get to be at home now and with the virtual hospital I am going to start trying to do some live performances. So I'm taking it easy. Tomorrow I am playing one song for the nurses and doc doctors um, that work in New South Wales. So that's just as my little thank you for them looking after me. And so I'm looking forward to that because I honestly haven't performed in a really long time. But otherwise, I'm feeling really good. I just really want to go for a walk. Today is my first day. I haven't coughed. So hopefully um, I get to get out soon. Oh, should we do the merch draw? Yeah, let's do the merch draw. Who's ready for a merch draw? When will you tour Australia? Will the shows be under 18? Not sure yet. Um, I'm looking at October for... Um, shows I just how do I um, but yeah I'm not sure if it'll be under 18 yet hopefully all right so for those who don't know I'm just crazy shaking up a jar of pieces of paper that's it no I'm kidding I'm doing a merch draw um, I've been doing it of the coloring in drawings that's happening every week um, there's no limits to how much you can enter um, you can uh, enter as many times as you like. Uh, each each colouring in entry um, counts as one entry. Fuck, colouring in piece of paper counts as one entry. 
and you can go for gold. I've been loving seeing everyone's uh, interpretations and perspectives because it makes me go, damn it, why didn't I do that? So uh, I feel inspired by you guys as well, which is really cool. Uh, so, yes, this thing is getting quite full. Thank you for my chopsticks. Um, but I'm just going to go and mix a little bit because I feel like it's just stayed in one place a little. Whoops. There's so many entries that's happening, so I'm really excited. If you guys are, haven't done uh, any of them yet, the link is in my bio on my Instagram. Um, it's easy to find. And then you just hashtag Jaguar Jones with your uh, entries, and then I'll find it and add it in. I've got to add one person's in who said that they put it, put theirs in. So that was Jackson... Husky, was that right? Did I remember it right? Yeah. Let's add that in. Do, 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 do. Okay, shake. Whack them in a hat. I should have done that, hey. Oh, I have a hat there. Can I still use the chopsticks though? I just want to be like, should I do the hat? I'll do it in the hat to, to be legit. Oh, spicy. I just have magical long arms. I'm just going to. Well, hey there, fellow kids. I've been in isolation for five weeks, so I've lost my mind a little bit. But never mind a cowboy, cowgirl with chopsticks, why don't you? Oh, shit. Sure. Well, hey there, fair lady. Let me put the entries in my head. Um, not being on Instagram in a few weeks, uh, literally the link is in my bio. If you want the other volumes from the other weeks, let me know and I'll try and organize that for you. <laughs> the chopsticks are making you guys hungry. All right. Are we ready for this week's winner of the merch draw? Oh, I dropped that. Here we go. <clears throat> Because he's been pimping it, pumping it, pimping it. <laughs> oh, it goes to Juicy Wombat. Juicy Wombat, Juicy Wombat, you're this week's winner. Um, we call him Juicy Wombat on the Patreon chat. I have loved his entries. It's made me just um, really uh, inspired on how I like tackle my own as well so harrison the juicy wombat this one is yours tune in for next week we're doing it all over again and uh, we're focusing on two other songs left on the ep um <clears throat> but yeah anyone can enter you can do whatever you want and remember everybody stay safe <laughs> All right, I'm going to tune out. But thanks for tuning in. Harrison, you're this week's winner. Um, <laughs> for any gays, I mean Eurovision fans, the last episode of Will and Grace is on tomorrow. So I'm just doing a public service announcement um, on behalf of Olympic Song Contest. <laughs> last episode of Will and Grace is on tomorrow, guys. Okay, thanks for tuning in this week. Um, I'll be posting all the finished colouring and drawings and sharing some of yours yours as well. Um, download them. It's for free. You can do whatever you want um, to it. If you're too scared to share your entry publicly online, I'm so fine with that. Just DM me. Uh, I've been doing that for a few people as well. I just include them in anyway. The whole point is for you guys to get creative uh, and to enjoy the process. It's not anything for me. The only thing that I get out of it is I get inspired back from you guys and how you guys interpret the work as well. So that's my favorite bit. Let's all just do something colorful and creative together. So DM me, post them up, hashtag Jaguar Jones. Uh, there's 
two more weeks left of the merch draw win. So get them in um, and you can do it as many times as you want. All right, guys. I hope you guys have liked Rising Sun. Um, the music video is up on YouTube. Um, and for Eurovision fans, you might recognize the set. I stole it from someone and then repurposed it. Um, and all of that was put together literally in a crazy fashion before I left for the US and was probably the last day uh, that we could have a group of people together. Sweet. Well, thanks all for tuning in. This has been Hagua Holmes streaming live to you with Joan Society Coloring Book Volume 4, Beijing Baby Edition. And y'all can tell that I've been on my own for way too long because I am taking this way too far with the cowgirl hair. So I'll see you guys next week, all right? Um, bye now. Bye. Bye. Bye now. How do I press the end button? Where do I press? Oh, gosh. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Oh, no.